This is Defender Radio. Defender Radio is brought to you by the Association for the Protection of Fur-Bearing Animals. It's the week of February 6, 2017, and this is Michael Howie welcoming you to episode 415 of Defender Radio. Culling gray seals on Canada's east coast will not help the recovery of Atlantic salmon populations. That's what the science says in a report prepared for the House of Commons Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans. But that committee, in opposition to all things good and logical, has said they are recommending the government undertake a cull of gray seals to aid in the recovery of wild salmon. Killing seals on Canada's east coast for economic purposes, not to be confused with the sustenance hunt undertaken by Inuit communities, is a political hot potato. This latest proposal is without merit and could, in fact, have negative impacts on a fish population in recovery. To talk about this report, her recent Huffington Post blog, what the science really shows about fisheries and seals, and the historic attempts to create an industry out of seal slaughter, Cheryl Fink, Director of Canadian Wildlife Campaigns for the International Fund for Animal Welfare, joined Defender Radio. We're going to talk a bit about the... uh the East Coast seal hunt, and we'll go into the difference between the two seal hunts that do take place. Uh, but this week, uh, the uh, uh, Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans released a report called Wild Salmon in Eastern Canada. Um, and you, you've penned a somewhat scathing piece for the Huffington Post um, where you say they are ignoring science and recommending a gray seal cull. So can you explain... I guess, well, what is the, the report? What's the function of it? And what are we learning through it? I mean, I guess the, the report is prepared by the standing committee, the House Standing Committee on Fisheries and Oceans, and it's prepared for the minister uh, to recommend on future actions with regards to salmon, wild salmon. Um, and one of the, so they have these hearings that have been going on since September, I believe, and scientists have come in, the fishing industry has come in, um, you know, outdoor fishermen's associations have come in and every group has an opportunity to present their testimony before the committee. And then these, these opinions or this feedback is taken into account for the, the committee's recommendations, supposedly. And so I'm following this from afar and I'm reading the transcripts online. It's all available on the government website. And I was pretty shocked when we saw the report come out, which actually one of the recommendations calls for a cull of gray seals. And this was shocking because I've gone through all of the testimony, all of the evidence presented by the scientists, by the witnesses, and none of them recommended a seal cull. None of them even suggested that seals were having any sort of impact on salmon stocks in eastern Canada. And in fact, the scientists that presented their their testimony came out very clearly and said that there was no evidence that seals were having any impact whatsoever. Um, and this was despite some very leading questions from members of the committee, sort of trying to lead them on, say, are you sure seals aren't causing a problem? Or, you know, and the scientists were very clear that seals were not ha- gray seals were not having an impact on salmon. So it's pretty surprising then to see this report come out and calling for a color seals. It's completely inconsistent with the scientific evidence that was presented during the committee meetings and inconsistent with any evidence actually that came up. Well, and while it's inconsistent and, and you and I have both looked through some of the research and some of the past documents. Um, and again, we, we were actually just talking about this not long ago, how you look at sort of the available information on culls and on fishery conflict around the world over the last 200 years. And there is no clear Marine, there is no clear evidence that culling marine mammals or other predators have actually alleviated conflict or had a positive impact on fisheries. It's just been done. Um, And in a lot of cases, they weren't actually, you know, the science hasn't been put in place to actually look for an impact. But in other cases where, where they were looking, you know, they often found that the cull didn't have the desired impact of increasing prey populations, or it had something completely unexpected. In some cases, it reduced uh, prey populations, so the complete opposite of what they were hoping to achieve with the call. And that's certainly something we see across the board in prey-predator relationships, and it's really interesting. We're seeing that, I think, more and more as new studies are done um, and as funding moves away from industry and into 
uh, independent science and academic sciences. Um, that's, and we, we just did a, uh, a video on culls with the fur bears and talking about all of this evidence that when we cull coyotes, their populations increase. When we cull wolves, depredation and poaching increase somehow. Like it's, the, the evidence is showing the exact opposite of what, I guess it's traditional agricultural thinking has been that get rid of the predators and the prey will be left. It's a very, yeah, I'd say it's a very old fashioned way of thinking in, in wildlife management as well. It's this idea that we just kill off the predator and somehow that's going to make things right when, you know, over a century of research and ecological studies have shown us that this just isn't the case. Um, and it, as we, as you said, it does have uh, hazardous impacts at times too. Um, now, Looking at this this report that was done by the government, um, or sorry, by the standing committee for the government, it's also interesting to note that their own science is not showing anything like this, but they have frequently been trying to have calls of these seals. This like this is not new. Um, no, it's definitely not new. I think at least thirty years, you know, fishing. The fishing industry and government bodies as well have been calling for a cull of seals well, more than decades. I think I could probably go back to the early part of the century where, you know, Department of Fisheries or whatever it would have been called at the time was, you know, go, going under this presumption that killing seals, killing whales, this is the answer to increasing fish stocks. Well, and it's interesting, too, because uh, as that was going on, we also saw the commercial value of seals declining pretty dramatically. Um, across the board. So from the, the oils that are harvested, the skins, um, I don't think the meat ever really had a market, did it? Not for, No, not for any seal species. And for, uh, gray seals in particular, they've had a, a really hard time trying to, to market even the skins. Um, it's the pelt of a gray seal. When we talk about the commercial seal hunt, we're normally talking about the harp seal hunt, which as you started at the outset is a, a sort of a different, it's different species, different hunt. But the gray seal pelt is how do I say it? It's flatter. It's not as uh, soft, I think, as a fur, so less desirable for the garment industry and the fur trade. And they've, I mean, they've never been successful really marketing gray seal products of any type in the world, meat or fur or even the oils, really. Now, why do you think it is? And this this is where we're going to get into a little bit of hazardous uh, speculation here uh, <laughs> before we jump back into some of the, the hard policy. But like, even with my my experience, which is is very limited by some standards, but I easily get confused when we talk about seal hunts um, because there is the there is the uh, sustenance hunting that is done in Canada's north by uh, Indigenous and First Nations populations in the Inuit, and then there are commercial hunts. But there isn't just one commercial hunt, as we were saying. There there is the commercial hunt for harp seals, and they're talking about culling gray seals. It seems to me in the language used in talking about this by the fur industry or by the fisheries or by the government that it's almost intentionally confusing trying to keep it all straight. I think, yeah, it is intentional. And you're right. When we talk, we talk about the seal hunt and, you know, there is what is the seal hunt. As you've pointed out, there's the, these are an Aboriginal hunt in the Arctic which is conducted by Inuit for ring seals primarily. And it's very much a full use hunt, hunt for food. And most of the animal is used. That's completely separate from what government calls the commercial seal harvest, um, which is the Atlantic seal hunt, which is when we talk about the commercial seal harvest, they're talking about the hunt for harp seals, gray seals and hooded seals. Now each of those species has a quota that's managed by the federal department of fisheries and oceans. Um, it has an allowable catch and there's regulations around it. Sealers need to be licensed to participate. That's the commercial seal hunt um, when we talk about that part of the issue. And yeah, it's divided into three different species, harp seals, gray seals, and hooded seals. Harp seals is the largest allowable catch with 400,000 animals that are allowed to be killed each year. And gray seals is the second largest with a quota of 60,000 animals that are allowed to be killed each year. Hooded seals, I'm not quite sure what the quota is, but I don't think any hooded seals have been taken recently. That's a that's a species that's going to be very, I think, uh, susceptible to the ice changes as a result of climate change, and there isn't too much of a hunt for that one right now. Mm -hmm. And and you, I note that you say the allowable catch. What is the actual harvest? Do we know? Well, for, fortunately, uh, yeah, the allowable catch or quota has been much higher than the numbers of seals that are actually killed in recent years. For harp seals, uh, the, 
the quota or allowable catch has been 400,000. Last year, only about 66,000 animals were actually killed as a result of the hunt. So it's much lower than the numbers that could be. And that's just because we don't have markets for seal products right now in the world. There's a very localized market for, I think, seal meat, seal flippers in Newfoundland. And we see some some fur garments. You know, there's a, two processors, I believe, that are still buying the pelts and trying to make seal garments. But on a global scale, we're, we're just not seeing the Mars. Greenland still has a surplus of pelts in stockpile. Um, we're seeing countries around the world that continue to move towards bans on seal products because as they become aware of the cruelty that's involved in the hunt. So the, fortunately, the market's just not there. And I think this is an industry that really is in decline and hopefully will disappear soon in the future. Well, and that's, of course, part of the the, the fun. I mean, we you and I have uh, had a great deal of fun talking about the plan. Uh, uh, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, when the Department of Fisheries uh, unveiled a plan that I, I think the Fur Institute was involved in it, if I recall, um, to kill gray seals and sell their penises and testicles as sexual enhancement products to Asian buyers, which was uh, wrong on pretty much every level you can imagine from being, you know, pretty much just flat out racist down to ecological, like backwards thinking. Um so like at what point do does the government say look it's like there's no market we're moving on I mean apparently we haven't reached that point yet because they're still entertaining these proposals and and I'll point out like hundreds of thousands of dollars are being paid to commission these proposals that as you say come up with things like we should kill seals to make seal penis energy drinks I think that same report that you were talking about was uh, talking about using seal skins to make welding aprons Mm -hmm. and uh, weather shields. Like some of the stuff that they come up with is so ridiculous. And then it's doubly ridiculous when you realize that the government is commissioning this and the proposals are going to cost, I think this one cost almost $22 million that it was going to cost the Canadian taxpayer to go ahead with this scheme and all to find. So this is all being done to try to find, to try to make markets out of dead seals that someone in the world will want to buy purportedly to protect fish stocks, even though there's no scientific evidence that that would actually be the case. Yeah. Um, and, and speaking of evidence, let's let's fall back to this report. Uh, the government is saying they need to do a gray seal cull uh, to protect the, the fish stocks. The science is not saying it. Um, what what should we do as advocates and animal lovers at this point when the like the, there's clearly a divide between common sense and reason and government policy? Well, I think now, I mean, this the report has been made, the recommendations have been made, and it's up to the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans uh, to decide how his department is going to act on them or not. And I think we really need to hold this government to account. Uh, when when liberal the liberals came into power, they promised real change. They promised they would treat their science science with respect. They promised they would listen to scientists, un, unmuzzle the scientists. Well, it's not doing very much good to unmuzzle your scientists if you're not going to listen to them uh, with your <laughs> when you make your policies. So I think we really need to put the pressure on the minister right now remind them of their commitment to science, remind them that there is no scientific evidence that supports culling seals, and make sure that they live up to their promises. Um, And something I did want to talk about, too, and this is going to evolve into something we were talking about before we started recording, but when we're talking about the number of seals, so we're saying, you know, the the allowable catch of, what, 600,000. Like, it's hard to fathom what that number actually looks like, um... Why is it wrong? Why is it bad to be killing these animals? Outside of the the belief that maybe we shouldn't kill animals, period, specifically in dealing with seals, why is there a a potentially negative impact on populations on the world for doing this? I think it, it comes down to a number of things. First of all, as you say, should we be slaughtering wildlife for profit, for commercial profit? Um, do we need to be killing animals? taking their skins or their flippers or their gallbladders or their fins or whatever part of them and putting that into global trade. Um, when history shows us that that sort of trade has by and large uh, led to overexploitation and depletion of wildlife populations. I mean, in a general sense, that's something I think that we want to avoid. When you add on top of that, the fact that seals are being killed for completely unnecessary purposes, these are, you know, this is not a They're not being killed for food or for anything that's remotely necessary. We're talking about handbags and briefcases and, you know, fur coats that cost $5,000, $7,000. 
Um, and then the third thing is there's a lot of evidence when it comes to commercial sealing that the way the seals are killed is not humane and can never be humane. Um, it's a very unregulated environment. Um, animals are trying to escape. You've got the wind conditions, weather conditions. You're trying to shoot at a moving seal from a moving boat on a moving ice flow. Very difficult to get a clean shot. Very difficult to, you know, to get a clean kill, I guess, and to kill an animal humanely. And we've got years and years of documentation of this from our observation of the hunt. And this is sort of the, the main driver behind the, the seal bans that have gone into place around the world is that it's not possible to to kill these animals humanely in the context of a large scale commercial hunt for, you know, like you say 400,000 animals, it's a huge number. Well, and, and something that has come up very recently too, is this, this video that's gone viral uh, of the killing. Uh, and it, I, I'm going to let you maybe sort of set it up and explain it, but I, I'd like to talk about that and whether or not it is representative of all of the hunters, some of the hunters or, is it maybe representative of the fact that it is entirely uh, uh, almost impossible to ensure levels of, and, and quality is not the right word, but levels of humaneness, for, for lack of a better term, are being applied? Okay, so this video that's come out, some of your listeners may have seen it. It's, it was picked up by the CBC. Um, and to be clear, these these fellows weren't sealing at the time, at least not legally. There's no, there is not a gray seal hunt open right now on the east coast of Canada. But the video shows uh, a fishing boat with a, a baby seal in it, a white coat gray seal. White coat meaning it's less than a week old, has not shed, it, shed its birth coat yet. Um, and they're tormenting it, they're taunting it, they're putting a, a buoy in its face, you know, sort of calling out to it, kicking it, and... Uh, it's a very disturbing video. They don't show, apparently the seal was killed, according to the news reports. That's not actually shown on the video. Um, and charges have been laid, which I think is appropriate in, the, in this case. But yeah, is that behavior, uh, would you say, is it representative of fishermen? I certainly hope not. Uh, and I would hate to sort of paint all fishermen with the same brush. On the other hand, we it is not uncommon to see that sort of thing at the seal hunt. Um, I've seen people pick up seals and blanket toss them on the ice, um, people posing for selfies with animals, just sort of general disrespect for the animal when they're out there. So, yeah, I don't think we can, I don't, wouldn't want to generalize from it. I think we need to be treat, treat each case individually, but I think there is actually a lack of respect for seals in particular on the east coast and i think this is driven by you know the way our politicians talk about them the way the media talks about them seals are treated as a, a pest species or something that's not worthy of respect or worthy of compassion or consideration and it's very easy i think for some people to forget that these are sentient animals they can feel fear they can suffer pain um they're not you know there's just things to be kicked around and tormented uh, as a play thing like these are these are living breathing feeling animals uh yeah and you know they it, they kind of sound like the coyote of the sea <laughs> as silly as that sounds just the way you talk about them it's the same way i'll talk about coyotes um, yeah that's you, a good comparison yeah if you exchange fisheries for ranches or uh something like that and it's it's again it's that well, they're not doing us any good, so we might as well kill as many of them as they can because they might have a negative effect on something. Um, although the difference being there is no uh, limit on coyote killing in anywhere in Canada. Uh, it's open season all the time with pretty much any method you can think of. Um, so my cause is better than your cause, Cheryl. Um, <laughs> And the, but they're both politically motivated. I'm they sure. They are. Why. There's like I said. There's no science to support culling predators in any case. It's just something to sort of get get a certain demographic of the population, uh, sort of appease them for a while. I think. Well, and that's something that's very interesting. There was there was a video that um, a group of uh, Newfoundlanders shared, um, where a guy sort of sat down. People, I think I can't remember the actual title of it, but it was tea with this fella uh, in St. John's. Uh, and uh, he sat down with them and asked them questions. What do they think of the seal hunt? And, you know, the one fellow says, oh, it's very important. It impacts the fishermen, and it provides them a lot of income, and this and that, and this and that. And then when they actually sort of share the statistics that it provides very little income, uh, like, uh, and I, I, I dislike saying nearly neg negligible because to everyone a dollar is worth something, but for the amount of 
work and everything like that that goes into it and the amount of subsidies being provided, it, it doesn't add up. Uh, the lack of science. It, is it a, a cultural thing too? I mean, the obviously early settlers of Newfoundland, um, seals would have been a good source of uh, fuel, of food, of protection. Uh, so could that culture be permeated through the, the centuries now to this modern day where people are very willing to accept that seals are meant to be killed? Yeah, like you say, it's just something that's sort of ingrained. And even though most people don't eat seal or, you know, <laughs> it's, most people in Newfoundland don't eat seal anymore. If they do, it's maybe once a year. But yeah, it's part of the culture, part of the history and a very difficult thing to sort of change people's attitudes towards the seal and to start to see them as something that should be respected and you know when we come to ecotourism talk about you know these seals are worth more as something that we can take people out to see in ecotourism and take them out to the ice flows to see the seal nursery seals are going to be worth so much more uh, alive than they would ever be worth to kill them and try to sell their pelts or penises or whatever you want to do well especially in newfoundland uh, i regularly see the newfoundland tourism ads on television um and it is one of the few places in Canada I haven't been that I would really, really like to go. And if you said, hey, give us 50 bucks and we'll take you out to see all of these seals and you can take pictures of them from afar. Like, absolutely, I would do that. So that would be an awesome afternoon. Yeah, um, and, it, and it's something that could be d directly transferred to, if, you know, a sealer is going out to kill a seal. He could easily go out and take a few tourists, you know. To, to the to see seal pups in, in the wild and it's an amazing experience incredible experience and it's something that you can't find anywhere else in the world except off our east coast so I think there's a huge opportunity there but you can say we get kind of stuck in our ways and this attitude that seals are there to be killed and I I see it again the similarities and it's it's interesting because the seal hunt issues typically stand apart from a lot of other animal advocacy and wildlife issues in Canada. And I think in part it's because it is so geographically pinpointed and it's also so closely tied to the fisheries. Um, so the politics of it, while they mirror perhaps the politics of other wildlife conservation, do have very unique circumstances. Um, but I also see there are these solutions available. Um, is this the kind of thing that just talking about it is going to make the difference? Like uh, talking with our, uh, you know, our MPs, talking with our local representatives, talking with our friends and families about the need for education on the subject. I think so, and in particular, talking talking to the politicians. Um, we're we are trying to work with Newfoundlanders to get a discussion going in that province as well because it's something that's it's difficult to talk about. It's very emotionally charged. Uh, people can get very defensive about it, but. I think in all of these cases, no matter where we are, we need to talk about it and need to start looking for positive alternatives that don't involve clubbing animals and selling their products on the world markets. I don't think markets for seal products are going to return anytime soon. And I think we could do so much more by promoting alternatives such as ecotourism. Um, you know, if we want to if we want to use seals as a quote unquote resource, let's use them as something in the live alive and value them alive and in the wild in their natural environment. I think we can do so much more there. To learn more about Cheryl's work to protect Canada seals, visit ifaw.org. That's it for this week, folks. For Defender Radio, this is Michael Howie reminding you to stay informed and stay strong. <laughs>